Are you thinking about starting your own business? Here are five steps to follow, to start with even today. Okay, so let's dive in. Number one, brainstorm ideas. Best startup ideas either solve your own problem, introduce a new technology or a skill into an established industry, or make a current solution faster, better, or cheaper. So our startup Relopilot checks all the boxes. So me and my co-founder, we both lived in different countries all across the world and we faced ourselves with the bureaucratic hurdles, the language barrier, as well as the culture shock. Besides that we both have a 20 plus years of professional experience in the industry and so we've seen the trends, the changes and also the things that could be improved. So for instance, we saw that there's more and more people willing to move abroad for a job opportunity, as well as more and more companies who are hiring internationally because they don't find enough people on the local job market. The current solutions didn't really address this need and that's where we come in. We digitalized what has been traditionally a more manual solution and of course, thanks to the use of technology, algorithms, and so on, we can create a more intuitive, simple, cheaper, and more personalized experience for the employees as well as their companies. Number two, talk to your ideal customer. So once you found an idea or several ideas, the best way to test them is to talk to your customer. And if you know, what kind of problem you're solving, you should also know who your customer is. And if you feel like they might be several ones or you're not quite sure, that's totally fine. Just talk to all of them and you will see, you will get to a point where it gets more clear who exactly needs your solution the most. So you wanna arrange at least 10 meetings or calls with your potential customers and talk about what problems do they have, what they're currently using to solve this problem, as well as you might talk about the different ideas that you might have. Of course, this is a little bit tricky because you don't want to talk straight away about what you have. Most of the people will be nice to you and will tell you, of course, this is great and of course I will pay it. But at the end of the day, if you really ask them to pay for it, no one will. And this is what you don't want to have. So especially if you're building a tech product that requires an investment or, you know, spending a bunch of money on building just the first version of your product, you want to make sure to read the Lean Startup book because it, this gives you a very good idea of how exactly to structure interviews in a way that at the end of the day you get information that's not going to cause, you know, at the end of the day building something that nobody really needs. Number three, build a minimal viable product or a prototype. Once you got enough feedback, you want to start with a minimal offering. So if you are selling online courses, you might start with an outline and try to sell it to your potential customer. Or you want to build a landing page where people might show their interest in your product. Or you build a simple click dummy instead of coding an app. So first write down all the features of your future app or maybe all the topics that you want to cover in your online course. And then little by little start crossing all the things that you don't need in the first step. So there will be certain things that of course you might have envisioned for the future of your product. But you want to start small so that you get the feedback that you need from your potential customers. And then once you have it, you can start building it further and progress even wherever you want to go. Number four, get feedback. Once you have this minimal offering, you want to talk to your potential customers and get feedback on that. Would they buy it? Would they change something? What do they think about it? This is the best way to save money building something, again, that people might not need. So this is the second stage where you should be talking to your customer. Either if you already have something, for instance, you, you have an outline for an online course and you know, you might try to sell it straight away before you start building it. On the other hand, if you're building, as in our case, a B2B solution that is more complex, you want to keep in touch with your friendly customers as much as you can. The feedback is truly crucial to the success of the product. Okay, now it's time to create the offering, build a product and launch it. And by launching, I don't necessarily mean throwing a big party or having a huge marketing campaign. 
you probably want to still see how this offering or this product is being handled or how it's being perceived by your customers. You might still iterate a product several times or tweak and adjust and it's totally fine. You are getting there. This process might take you several days if you have a simple offering, up to several months if you have a tech product like for instance in our case. I've seen many people building something first and then trying to sell it to customers. What happens is that it often doesn't work because only because you're solving your own problem or only because you think that this is great doesn't mean that other people also need it. And that's where this process, even if it takes longer and you feel like, you know, you don't have time for this, please do that. Just do that and you will see will make all the difference and it will actually help you to progress faster compared to someone who is creating something that nobody needs. Okay, there you go, five steps to start your own business. I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, give me a like and subscribe to my channel for new videos every single week. Thank you guys so much for watching and I catch you next week on Boundaryless.